All right, I think I'm good to go. Got my coffee and got everything set up. I'm very excited. All right, so this is my my Disneyland cup or my Disney World cup souvenir, the, like one of the few souvenirs that I actually got while at Disney World. It was just so me, I, I couldn't resist. But what's inside this cup is actually coffee, not like little John's <laughs> or she stuck some wine in there but you do what you gotta do, girl. I totally get the whole nerves thing. I always get a little nervous when I go on live. So if I start to ramble or if I get a little nervous, forgive me, I just get a little nervous about doing lives because everything is on time with you guys. You are seeing me live right now. I am here and I'm so excited to be spending time with you. Welcome everybody in the chat. I'm so excited to have you here. Honestly, last night I told my husband, I was like, I'm actually really excited to do my live tomorrow. I miss you guys. I miss you so much. <laughs> and uh, just that connection with you being able to talk directly to you. And I had so much fun with our live tutorial. I really did. So if you don't know who I am and you just saw the thumbnail and you're clicking on, my name is Tiffany Hansen. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to be making the rustic star ornament or garland. This is beautiful. I did not think it would turn out so well, to be honest with you, because I was like, this is just so simple. But when I put it on my wall, I was like, that looks really cute. <laughs> so I'm really excited to share this with you. I, you might recognize the star. I actually made the star in December. I made a tutorial for it for a Christmas tree ornament which was darling, it was super, super cute. And somebody commented on that video and said, why don't you do a star garland for the 4th of July? And I was like, what a great idea. And then when I made it, I was like, this is not just a 4th of July garland. This is something you could do for any holiday or even as a regular home decor item. My daughter's bedroom, the aesthetic in there, the color scheme she has going on is creams and that natural wood color. And I was like, this will look so good in her room, especially with that new vibe that, or not new, but that vibe that's really popular right now of the farmhouse rustic look, totally jives really well. Welcome everybody to my chat. I start focusing a lot on here. I contact with you and I stop looking here, but Thank you so much for joining me this morning, 10 a.m. on a Friday. I know some of you are at work right now or some of you, it's really, really late. So appreciate you being here. Uh, how this tutorial is gonna go. So if you're new to my live tutorials, this is how they work. So I start with just the tutorial. In this case, it's the Rustic Star Garland, okay? And I focus solely on the tutorial part. That way, if you're coming to this video after the live, you can just dive straight into the tutorial part. After I'm done with the tutorial part, then I will say, okay, now it's the Q&A sec section of this video. And I will go back to the chat and I will start addressing all of your questions. So while I'm doing the tutorial, if you have any questions at all, feel free to put that in the chat. That way I will come back to it during that Q&A section, okay? Um, or you can just wait till the Q&A section, but that at least gives me a second to, uh, I know a lot of people are like, don't read through the comments, but I don't have a helper at the moment. <laughs> so I'll be reading through the comments. Um, but yeah, that's how this Q&A will go. If you come up with any crochet related questions while we are on this tutorial, pop those in there for me. That way I have more to engage with you and talk to you about when we are actually doing the Q&A section. Uh, it just helps things flow. <laughs> Hold on. I need to drink some coffee. Oh, that's fresh coffee. That's hot. <laughs> All right, um, so yeah, I think that's it. All right, if you do like this video at any point in time, please give it a thumbs up. It just really communicates to YouTube that it's a video worthwhile watching, and so it tells other people to watch it. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of fun videos, all crochet related. I have different types of things, so I try to make it well-rounded <laughs> and a lot of fun. I also do giveaways and live tutorials like this where I can just engage with you and have a lot of fun. All right, so I did put a link to the pattern at the top of the chat. 
if you're watching this video after the chat or after the live, I have put a pattern to the, the or a link to the pattern in the description section below. And when I have an opportunity to do so, I will also put it in the comment section below the video to make things really easy for you to access. This pattern is free. I have it in my Google Docs right now. So if you go to the document and it's not allowing you access, which is super annoying, just request access or ask, push that button. And as soon as I see that, I will grant you access to it. Or if you want to, you can always email me also at crochet with Tiffany Hansen at gmail.com. Say that you just want to get access to that star pattern and I will email that link or that pattern just directly to you. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, here's, here's the pattern too. If you want to pause the video, write that down and grab it. It's kind of long, but it's an option for you. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the materials that we're using for this pattern, it's really interesting, it's twine. We are using twine in this. So I found this twine at the Dollar Tree. It was a three pack. So three of these for a dollar. It is on the thinner side and it makes the stars, let me see if I can pull this down for you. I'm gonna pull my garland down so you can see this Ugh. okay so move all you guys out of the way for a second i made two different stars too with the, they're both twine but it's a different thickness so you can kind of see that this twine here that i used was the dollar tree twine that was really thin and it made this star here this star I made with a thicker twine and I ended up using the whole thing and it didn't tell me any dimensions of, or thickness measurements, but it will at least give you an idea that if you have a thicker twine, it'll come out looking like this. If you have a thinner twine, it'll come out looking like this. Now, both are beautiful in their own way. I love, they both have their own kind of rustic look to them, okay? But it is just twine. That's all it is. The crochet hook, let me, here we go. So I'm using twine. The crochet hook that I'm using is a J10 or a six millimeter crochet hook. And then of course, scissors. And optional is a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in the ends at the end. But I was able to do this also with my crochet hook. So that's totally up to you. All right, are you ready to get started? Let's do this. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so I start by chaining two. So with a long enough tail for you to weave in those ends, which I, I give myself about two inches because I'm just kind of in and out, in and out. It's not like a full weave in. I'm gonna create my slip knot here. Attach my crochet hook, there we go. And everything is going to be on the looser end just naturally because all these little fibers are going to create friction and make it hard for you to make tighter stitches, which is okay because if they were too tight, it would be really hard to work with. So we start by chaining two. One, two, okay. To begin row one, we're gonna make 10 double crochets in that first chain. So, oopsie. Go slow so you don't accidentally make a half double crochet. I'm gonna take the opportunity now to mention if you would like to help donate to my channel, I do have super chats and super stickers and all proceeds would go towards my channel and help me out with paying for stuff like the software I'm using right now to do this live stream or the materials that I'm using for my channel. This is all completely optional. I just wanted to throw that out there if you would like to donate. I am open to that. Also, if you have a very important question that you want to get my attention with, that super sticker really gets my attention and helps me out a lot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, 
eight, nine, and 10. Perfect. Once we get all the way around, I'm gonna just pull that tail out of the way. Slip stitch into the top of the very first chain. Now it's gonna be a little hard to see, so really honestly, find that first part, go to the top, slip stitch. Don't let it be too complicated. And you're gonna be left with something that looks like that. Perfect. Okay, next direction. So for round two, we're gonna chain one. We're gonna single crochet in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. Boom, right there. Then we're gonna chain five. Go to the next slide here for you. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. In the second chain from our crochet hook, we will single crochet. In that third chain, we will half double crochet. You got all these weird fibers and like pieces of wood that's in the twine. It's really funny and really cool. In the fourth chain, we're gonna make a double crochet. And in the fifth chain, we're gonna make a treble crochet. And if you're unfamiliar with the treble, we're gonna yarn over once, yarn over two times, insert our crochet hook into that last chain there, yarn over, pull through only two, yarn over, pull through only two, and then yarn over, pull through only two. Perfect. Back to the work. We're going to reposition ourselves so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> Skip that next stitch and single crochet in the following stitch. Single crochet. Yes, there will be this big gap right here. We're going to fix that with round three. So don't, don't worry about that. Okay. Chain, okay, repeat, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Second chain, single crochet. Third chain, half double crochet. Fourth chain, double crochet. And fifth chain, treble crochet. Now when it comes to live tutorials, I am going to be working the whole way around so that way I can make sure that I do every step with you. So that's the thing with live tutorials is it takes a little longer for me to get from step to step. So again, skipping the first stitch, single crocheting in the next stitch right there. And I think that's actually my next step here that I haven't shown you quite yet. Uh, let me see, skip stitch. Yep, okay. So you'll see leg here, leg here. We're gonna do this three more times because stars have five legs or five points. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so while I'm getting through round two, I just wanted to remind you, if you are talking in the chat right now, welcome for coming to my chat, welcome. Um, I am not looking at the chat at the moment, so if you're asking me any questions right now, <clears throat> I am just doing the tutorial part, and I will get to all questions as soon as I'm done with the tutorial. So I promise I'm not ignoring you. <clears throat> Skip stitch, next stitch, single crochet. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Crochet, half double, <clears throat> and double, and treble. One, two, three, skip, next stitch, single crochet. Okay, last one, thank goodness. One, two, three, four five, single crochet, half double, double, 
and treble. All right, and then skip the next stitch. And in that same stitch here that we already have a single crochet stitch in, we're just gonna slip stitch into that stitch to close round two. To do this, you might need the claw of your hook to get in there. Oops, I want my yarn to be behind me. There we go, and then I can grab it and then just slip stitch to close that. And you'll be left with this. Oh my gosh, I have so much going on right now. You've gotta, you've gotta see this, I'm gonna show this to you. Like, I'm gonna show you how things look for me right now. So, it's a little wonky, but if you're wondering why I'm a little shaky, it's because I'm literally working like this. <laughs> This is how we do most of our tutorials. It's very awkward, but you get to see everything look like this. <laughs> All right, so when we, I'm gonna adjust my camera back. When we're ready for round three, This is really just the round that cleans everything up. It was really important for me to, because these sections are just so big. I was like, I want everything to be clean. So for round three, this is what we're going to do. You're going to slip stitch. So skipping the next stitch right here, skip next stitch. You're gonna slip stitch into the bottom of that first treble crochet or this bottom of that first stitch we run into. So slip stitch there. And then slip stitch in the next three stitch spaces. So a total of four. So one, then two, three, four. We're now at the top of that leg. We're gonna chain one and then go back down the other side. This side you actually see V stitches. Slip stitch one, slip stitch two, slip stitch three, slip stitch four. I think I tried to get all the instructions on here for you. There we go. Once we reach the bottom of that point, skip the single crochet stitch and move straight over to the next treble crochet the bottom of that stitch. Slip stitch one, slip stitch two, slip stitch three, and slip stitch four. Should get us to the top of that point. Chain one and slip stitch back down. One, two, three, and four. If I haven't welcomed you yet, welcome to my live stream. Thank you so much for being here with me. Again, skipping single crochet stitch. One, two, three, four. All right, chain one at the top, down the next side. We're so close to being done. One, two, three, four, skipping that single crochet, one, two, three, four, chain one, one, That's it, that was the last point. Once we get to the bottom of that last point, slip stitch into that first V stitch you see that we started with. Slip stitch right there. Perfect, and our star is done.
cut off a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends. Pull that off to the side and yarn over that tail. Pull it through the loop on your crochet hook and pull tight and that secures or fastens off your project. Now what I will do is you can either choose to use your crochet hook and weave that tail to the center or you can grab your yarn needle and use that to weave that tail to the center just to clean those up and it doesn't have to be anything crazy fancy because again it's already a rough material so don't worry about going weaving back and forth or in between fibers or anything once you have your two strands in the middle I just tie a knot one two for security take my scissors and cut pretty close to the end again this twine is extremely frictional so it's not going to slip out of the knot it stays pretty tight and that is your rustic star now how I turned it into the garland I oh see it's messy <laughs> it's messy all right so really let me grab the garland so I can show you. So the top of the garland is just a chain. No particular chain count. That's all completely up to you and how uh, spaced out you want your stars to be. I didn't even count. I just looked and eyeballed. So this is just a chain that you chain as long as you want it to be. And then my star length the shortest star, I cut a 10 inch long string and then I just tied it here and tied it here. And the longer dangly ones are a 20 inch long string and there we go. And I just tied it here and I tied it here. And my personal opinion, I thought the ties being left out made it look more rustic and more handmade, and I liked that. But if you do not, you can always take this tail and weave it into the star. And you can do the same thing up here with where you tied it to the chain. You could just take that tail, maybe have it be longer, <laughs> so you can actually weave it in, and then I'd weave it into the chain one way, and then backwards upon itself, just to make sure it doesn't accidentally like slip out. All right, so that, my lovelies, is how you do this project. Oh, let me take off those guys. Awesome, great. So thank you so much for following along with me. I hope it was easy enough to follow. We are now entering into the actual Q&A portion of this tutorial. So if you have any questions related to the tutorial itself, or if you have any crochet related questions that you'd like to ask me, now is the best time to do so in the chat. Also, if you are just entering into the chat, I am open to super stickers or super chats. And all that does is support my channel and help me purchase materials to create for you and it also helps me with all of the subscriptions that I need to purchase in order to keep things like these lives going. So that is completely optional if you would like to but absolutely not required. Okay so let me take a second and go through all of your chats. All right I know some people are like I don't like it when people read but I don't have a helper. At least not right now <laughs> okay so welcome everybody welcome 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 thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to be here with me I love seeing everybody from all over the world entering into the chat and saying hi Oh, somebody else is working on a garland. That is so cool. You're doing hearts. I love that. Try making hearts with twine too. That would look really beautiful. Yay, 
somebody's making my Tiffany top, you've got to let me know how it turns out. Oh, yay, somebody finally got a notification. I know those can be a pain. You guys are all so amazing. Thank you so much for every post that you've posted. Okay, someone did ask, Debbie, thank you for asking. She asked how I prevent the wine, or the wine, the twine from killing my hands. Would hemp be easier to use? You can absolutely use hemp. Uh, this twine is is fairly soft, actually. It's, it's not too coarse, so I don't have a problem with it with my hands, but I can see some some twines being really coarse and those being harder to use. So that's really where you use what works best for you. What should I crochet next after I finish my blanket? That's a hard question. <laughs> there are so many projects that I am both currently working on and want to work on and whew, it all depends. Are you a blanket only person or are you somebody that wants to try to break out of the box? Because I know like my Tiffany top is basically just two rectangular sections. So it's virtually two small blankets that I just joined together. So if you wanted to give that a try, that would totally be a good introductory transition into a completely different type of project that I think you would have a lot of fun with. Um, that's so funny. Uh, no that you were just thinking about doing a garland and then my tutorial popped up, that's, that's just meant to be. It's just meant to be right there. I love when that stuff happens. That has happened a couple of different times with a few of my followers where I will post a tutorial and they'll be like, how did you read my mind? And I'm like, he, 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 he. <laughs> um, And if I'm missing any of your questions, please either point that out or re-ask. I, I don't want to miss anybody's question. Um, I feel like you're just getting the top of my head. <laughs> Love you, sir. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I enjoy a lot about these live tutorials is you're seeing my process in real time. It's not like I'm hopping from round to round to round just trying to get through the steps quicker in order to make the tutorial shorter um, it, you're getting my projects in real time and it's for that reason that i try to make the tutorials i specifically choose tutorials that are easier and quicker for me to get through for you Can you please do a tutorial to have straight edges for a hexagon motif blanket? So with the hexagon motif blanket, if you want to have straight edges on that, you're gonna have to make halfies, <laughs> uh, half of the hexagon. That's the only way to get the sides straight, really, honestly. Um, I could play with that for you and I could put that on my, my tutorial list. It will take me a little while to get to that for you, but that's how you would do it. If you're making the hexagons, you would just make a halfy one, which is when you start at the center, you would only do half of the instructions and then move on and then just do row after row, just doing a half of it. 
keeping it straight and then you're probably going to rely heavily also on blocking that blanket that that, that should at least help you in the meantime to get to where you want to be Oh, cool. Okay, so somebody is doing their very first craft show in July. I'm very excited for you. Uh, and they're looking for pointers. So for pointers for a summer show, you're going to want to have a lot of littles. Uh, I call them smalls in my, my tutorial that I did last year. Uh, you're going to want to have a lot of smalls, things that are... That are uh, not uh they're cheaper they're faster for you to make they don't require a lot of cost and materials and i would recommend a lot of baby stuff baby this is definitely baby season people are having a lot of babies or just had babies and they're going to go baby gaga over any baby stuff so i would focus on those areas because you don't want to focus on adult beanies because people are not shopping for that right now. Uh, you, you don't want to focus on blankets so much because that's too heavy. It's too hot and people they'll look at them and they'll think they're beautiful, but they're not going to be in the market to buy that right now. Um, unless it's a baby blanket, that's really lightweight. And again, a baby, 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 every baby stuff just People have a whole different mindset when it comes to buying stuff that's baby. Um, and yeah, just toys. Crochet toys is going to be a big one for you too. Anything that is not wearable, it's too hot. Uh, so I would go for that. Also, like I mentioned in that video, you're going to want to try to hit those key points, those um you're gonna tr you're gonna want to make things that will create that spark in somebody, that interest, that connection with them. So, like I mentioned, m m uh, oh, mom, you can't watch this part. Don't if you're watching, mom, you got it. You got to get off. Um, I just went to a store and I looked through the whole store, and it was a beautiful store, but there was just one item in that store that I saw that reminded me of my mom. And I was like, I've got to get this right now and be prepared for Christmas, like right now. And the only reason why I bought anything in that store is because it sparked an interest. I know, I knew it was something that she enjoyed, she liked. And in this case, it was, mom, you better not be watching. Uh, it was one of those old campers it was a, a ceramic vase that was in the shape of an old camper. And my mom loves old campers. So it was a connection that I made with her and I had to buy it. So if you're crocheting things in the intent of selling them, make sure that you are crocheting things that are niche, they're a niche, they're a, they're a, a thing that people are really into or collectible. Um, oh, thank you, PJ. Mwah. I'm so glad to have you here in the chat in general, but thank you so much for your super chat. I will read the, the comment in a second. <laughs> um, so also, like I went to a Christmas bazaar la uh, two years ago and the whole, it was a huge Christmas bazaar and people made all these amazing handmade things. And the only thing that I actually considered buying, I didn't actually buy it, but I considered buying was a pillow that said Fortnite on it because my son was obsessed with Fortnite at that moment. If you need ideas on what to make, like you're just clueless on, well, what's popular? What's niche? What are people into? You can go to... Any store, regular store that, um, it, like Walmart, you can go to Target, you can go to Kohl's, you can go to any like clothing store or super store and check out what themes they have going on, what is popular, and you can just take that uh, idea, right? Or colors, what colors are in season? The store is going to be the best helper with that because they've already had the marketers out there, the testers out there. They have paid for all the research to be done. They did all the work for you. So all you have to do is really just jump on that bandwagon and you know, see like what are people into? Like what's in the decor department? 
what are people into, you know, and that, that can be helpful, at least to get you started and until you can see what sells well. All right, so let me hop to PJ real quick. Are you planning on doing a textured hat and scarf for this year? My daughter has me making the Tiffany top for her. So I do have intentions of making a very beautiful textured scarf. Um, I could make a, a matching beanie to go with it. I hadn't really thought about that, but I could do that. I can make that happen for you. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll make a note of that in the process because I am going to be start, starting to make scarves and hats in August. That's going to be a big one. Um, especially since I'm planning on doing the Warm Up America, another Warm Up America campaign this summer. So, and it's going to be based on hats and scarves and potentially gloves. Just a lot. It's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> All right. So backing up a little bit. Uh, oh, I'm glad that I was the one that helped you learn how to join ends. That's really, really cool. That's also really, really helpful because I was lost for a long time. Uh, it actually didn't really hit me all the different ways to join ends and stuff until I started teaching and still I start until I started doing YouTube and really honestly, uh, it was people not really liking the way I was doing the, uh, the joining of the ends in my first mini tutorials. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to figure out other ways and learn. And then I found a whole bunch and <laughs> I was like, I got to share this with you guys. I love being able to learn something and then directly share it with you. It's so fun. It's so cool for me. Yes. So my original idea for this garland was to also take ribbon and attach the ribbon, a red, white, and blue for it being a 4th of July item and uh, attach the ribbon between each star. I thought that would be really cute. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, my owl tattoo. It was, it's, it's one of my favorites for sure. I really, it means a lot to me. I'm glad you like it. Um, okay, uh, is there any way to do other than, oh, <laughs> you're responding to the half hexagon thing. Um, okay, so you're working with hexagons. You want to join. If in the chat, if I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna throw this back to uh, all of my many amazing people in the chat. If you have any ideas on how Zara, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, if, how Zara can um, make a hexagon blanket and have straight sides, let us know. I mentioned doing a half hexagon and attaching those to the sides to make it straight. I mean, the other way that I would do it really is it would take some steps, but it would be to fill those sides or fill those holes with, um, I would start with a single crochet stitch to border it. And then in that hole, my next, my next row would be like sing or slip stitch down and then single crochet across and then slip stitch up. And then next row, I would slip stitch down, single crochet across and then slip stitch up and then slowly kind of build that up. But that might be a process. Another way you could do it, but it would be a process. Um, just finished crocheting baby hats, baby blankets, cocoons, waiting to donate. That's beautiful. I love that. I made my uh, I made a baby cocoon for my new baby nephew that was born and I really enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Um, is there any way you could walk me through how to do a standing double crochet stitch? I'm changing colors in my granny square shrug and would like to try that. A standing double crochet stitch. 
I don't think I've heard of that before. And that's, there's a lot of stitches that I've never heard about, learned, and then love to share. Um, I'll write that down and I will get back to you about how to do that. That could be a quick, fast tutorial on how to do that. But yeah, let me, let me look into that and I will see how I can help you out, okay? Thank you for asking, Heather. I appreciate that. Uh, I crochet grocery bags. When I go to grocery stores, people want to buy them. Not selling. I like that you made something though that people are stopping you and saying they want to buy them though. That's super flattering. That always makes me feel good when somebody stops me and says, that's really cute, or I really like that. Um, hello, Susan. <laughs> I always have trouble with borders on blankets. The sides are always uneven. What is your suggestion? So I did make a video on the single crochet border for beginners. And I think that is a great place for you to start um, because it is like the easiest way to understand why we do the sides of blankets, the way we do the sides of blankets and um, practice. It's a good, just simple, easy stitch to just dive in practice. Um, because I think the thing that really gets people with sides of blankets when doing a border is just understanding that the stitch used in the side of that row, you have to just be able to match the length or the height of that row with your single crochets or with the stitches that you're using for your border. That way it's staying, that, that row is staying that size because if you just undercut that row, then the row will shrink. Or if you put too many stitches in the side of that row, the row will, oh, I'm sorry, my hand's out of view. The row will grow. And that is what causes either ripples or shrinks, is when you don't have enough stitches in the side of the row to keep that row, that levelness. So I think in that video, uh, single crochet stitch border, for beginners, I think that's what it's called. Um, it, it helps explain that even further and can help you. So I'd start there and practice there. Um, I do the halves too, to be honest. Otherwise you would have to fill in the blocks. Yep. Oh, great. Okay, PJ, thank you for the help. So uh, the Secret Yarnery on YouTube, she has a way of helping you out to do smaller hexagons and other ways to make the sides of your hexagon blanket straight. So she is awesome and amazing and I really enjoy her channel as well. So check her out and maybe look through her videos to see how you can finish off that blanket the way you want to. Oh yay, you're attempting the, the doggy jumper, the doggy coat, or the doggy sweater, or whatever you wanna call it. Barrett was such a trooper. He really was in the process of doing it. And I promise somebody said that he was too hot. He really wasn't in that sweater for very long at all. So he was mostly just unamused with being on camera. <laughs> Bit of a diva. Okay, Mikey from the Crochet Crowd has a tutorial on uh, on stranding stitches, or standing stitches, sorry, sorry. Okay, so that might be helpful also. PJ, you're amazing. Thank you for helping out, piping in in the chat. And I think this is the last one. Oh, the Euphoria, Euphoria cardigan. So I, I did look into the euphoria, euphoria cardigan 
and I thought it was beautiful. So it is definitely, if it's the same one I'm thinking of that I researched and saw, it is definitely another spin on the granny square, turning the granny square into an actual wearable. And I loved that. It was literally just a granny square that you added long panels to. So you finished off the square and then you stopped and you took the two sides and you just kept going <laughs> except where you left two slits that you would then add armholes to so it did seem simple enough I loved the design I would honestly when I was looking at this I would adjust the granny square in the middle to be something really pretty like a really pretty granny square in the middle instead of a, a general granny square to make the back of this cardigan really pretty and shine your crochet skills even though secretly you're like that was actually really easy but we don't have to tell people that <laughs> uh, and and then the rest of it seemed pretty easy I I liked it a lot and I just need to find uh, a time in my schedule to get that tutorial out for you guys uh, check if you aren't already, check my uh, Instagram and my Facebook. I will let you know what projects I'm in the current, I am currently working on, my whips, works in progress. Uh, and if you see me, that's when I'll show you when I start something and hopefully I can get that started in the fall. Um, you are so welcome, Heather. Thank you for chatting with me. <laughs> Baby cardigan patterns. So I do have two baby cardigan patterns that I have that I want to do. One is an actual already created pattern that I've made once before and it was super cute and it was really easy and I could get that one out. And another one, a friend. Gosh, I haven't heard from you in a while, Christina. I hope I see you in the chat or I hope that I um, get get a comment from you uh, but Christina sent me a pattern a couple or Tina sorry <laughs> uh, last year and it didn't have a pattern created it was just a picture with the, the, the diagram and I had to kind of figure it out from the diagram like what I was doing but there was no pattern and I put one together but I feel like it needs just more finesse and I want to choose better colors because the colors that I played with it, um, they're not great colors and all of us crocheters know that color can really make or break a project. If you make something in the wrong colors, it's like, eh, thanks. <laughs> and you're like, no, no. So you have to, you have to choose the right colors. It's super, super important. Um, so yeah, I have two, one for sure that is already ready to go. And the other one that needs a little more, needs a little more attention. Thank you guys. Oh, I love all of your amazing, encouraging comments. What is your favorite granny square project? I don't have one yet. I ha I got a whole book. I'm so excited. So I've been really doing, I've doing a, been doing a lot of research. My favorite crochet books to get right now are the old ones. So I go to half priced books or I go to um, old bookstores that people just gave their book, you know, gave their books back. They're old, old books. And I love finding old crochet books because I look at these patterns and I'm like, okay, if all I did was tweak the colors and really update the color scheme, this pattern's really cool. And people, I think right now, they're more into making their own thing. Like, I got to create something new. And I, I respect that. And I think that's great. That's it's also a lot, right? So, I like to look at the old stuff and I got a whole book full of granny squares that are gorgeous and I want to play with that and so I don't feel like I can really rightfully say I have a favorite yet though the two tutorials that I've made so far I've had a lot of fun with so I really enjoy like this one that we made and I love the colors that are put together that one was a lot of fun. And then also that Dreamweaver crochet, um, the granny square that I just came out with. 
uh, that one was also really fun and really beautiful too. And I'm hoping to actually make something with a couple of those. I'm making a couple of them and I'm going to join them together and I'm trying to figure out what I want to actually do with them. <laughs> uh, it's a process, but, um, you guys keep, you guys keep adding to the comments and I'm like, I think I'm done. And then I'm like, I'm not done. I made an ice cream cone keychain for myself a while back. Literally every person that sees it asked me to make them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I sold, I sold a lot of those ice cream cone keychains. It's a, it's a small, it's a little thing and I have a tutorial for it. So if you want to know how to make it in all different kinds, you know, make one with sprinkles, make one with a cherry on top, make one that's just a fun color, do it. I should, I showed how to make it in all different ways and it's a lot of fun and people love it. It's easy to sell. Oh yeah, I I'm I love Crystal from Bag of Day Crochet. I still watch a lot of her tutorials. She posts out so many I can't catch them all, but I I do enjoy her channel and who she is. Um. You know, it's funny when I'm on live, when I'm talking to you guys, I am, I have a lot more energy and I think it's also nerves, but, um, I have a lot more energy and if I could bottle that, I would totally bottle it even for myself because there's a lot of time when I'm just sitting on the couch, chilling, just relaxing and watching TV and crocheting. That is my favorite thing to do. And so, I mean, my kids have way more energy. My mom has way more energy than me and I'm just like how how have you ever made a shadow box craft room I have not I have not I, I'm actually I, f I feel like I've heard that before but I can't picture it in my head um love Janie can you please uh, put in the chat what that is? <laughs> the shadow box craft room. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Oh my gosh. So I love this. I love that you you said that Gregory or Greg, wh wh however you go by. Um, I had somebody actually just reach out to me and say they wanted to make a cape, like a hooded cape. And I was like, that sounds so cool. It really does. Uh, if, especially if you do it right. Uh, it can be just magnificent. Really, you do like a really broad hood and a really flowy cape and you pick the right color too. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing for fall. Wow. I feel like I've seen something before, a crochet pattern before that did this and um, it was stunning. It was absolutely stunning. But you're right, a lot of 1970s crochet shawls are as big as some of these capes and <laughs> it is, I think people just like bigger. They do. Uh, uh, I've had a few people like the smaller shawls, but in general, especially myself, I like a shawl that can completely cocoon me, like wrap around me. Oh yes, thank you so much for mentioning this, Samantha. So if you don't know this already, I do have a uh, the giveaway. If you haven't entered into my giveaway yet, make sure you do so. I have a my third mystery box giveaway going on right now and I announce the winner of that tomorrow at 3 p.m. So if you haven't entered in that, get over there right now. Oh great, so you have some ideas of, of some good crochet books. Well, whales sell really well, I believe it. That's also, whales are really popular right now. 
<laughs> yeah, I would love to do a cape tutorial. That one is also one that's going to take me a little while just to create a demo, write a pattern out for it, and then I would definitely get that one tested before I went public with that one. Oh, it's a, oh, thank you. It's a picture frame, dollhouse furniture in. Okay, so are you crocheting all of those pieces? Because I have not done that. It's a, so she said a shadow box is basically a box that has like a whole like living situation in with furniture and uh, what else did you say? Yeah, just little pieces in this shadow box to make it look like a living situation. And I have not done that yet. It looks adorable. I thought about making a, a little motor home, one of those um, round old motor homes where the front falls forward and you see everything going on on the inside. I actually printed out a pattern for that, but it's one of those, that is one of my bucket list. I would love to crochet this if I ever got a chance to projects. Awesome. Okay, so I've reached the end of my chat. Thank you everybody for A, joining me today and having spending time with me out of your busy day. I know at the end of these uh, tutorials with the Q&A, it gets a little bit long because I am engaging with you. I'm answering questions and I'm hoping that you enjoy. I really do. Okay, Crystal from Bag of Day Crochet has a tutorial for a hooded cape. Of course she does. She's been around for a, a long time and she has such brilliant ideas. So I'm not surprised. Okay, I love it. I'm gonna get back to it, Samantha. You guys are incredible how you just keep going and you keep going, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, sh cut this off right now and say thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for being a part of this. Even if you were just listening and in the background and just kind of observing the chat and what was going on. Thank you for joining the tutorial part. Let me know if you have any questions in regards to that in the comment section below. I had so much fun. I hope you did too. I'm going to be doing live tutorials the third Friday of every single month. So I look forward to seeing you in next month with that live tutorial. If you want to, you can also catch me live tomorrow when I announce the winner to my third mystery box giveaway. That'll be a lot of fun too. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, guys. I always love crocheting with you. I love spending time with you. And I hope you have the best day.